I have a lot of a terrible experience, made a lot of mistakes when I was young and child. I think if you succeed, every mistake becomes legendary. If you fail, that's just garbage. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody has great stories. Everybody has a lot of mistakes. Everybody has a lot of problems. But very few people listen to you. One day when you become successful, people listen to you and say, Wow, you are great. I'm not that great. I was born in a normal family. And I'm not good at schooling. Of course, I tried to study hard, but as a boy, you know, my school was not that good at that time. So I failed looking for jobs, looking for joining university, joining good schools. But I never give up. And I think there's one thing I learned is that um, why, why you should have a chance to be successful. Everybody should get used to be get used to fail, but not get used to be accepted by other people. Why other people should help you? You should earn the right to be helped. So the thing I learned is that don't give up. My opportunity has not come yet. When everybody complain, that is the opportunity. I always thought when I was young, when I was graduate in, in the high school or university, I thought Bill Gates took off my job. You know, Bill Gates did all the successful things. Larry Erickson from Oracle, they they took all the wonderful opportunities. IBM benefit. We people have no opportunity. And I think I aim too high. I should aim to support and help the people around me. Do tiny things. I never thought I could be today. After 18 years, Alibaba become today's size. Not because I'm smart. I don't think I'm a smart person. But I, have, I work with a lot of smart people. And most of smart people, they always want to do successful things, quick, easy things. And I think it's not easy to be successful quickly. Every time, everything we do, we prepare for 10 years. I know I'm not smart. If we want to be successful, we have to win 10 years later. If we want to be successful, we have to work with smart people. If we want to be successful, we should make a lot of mistakes and never give up. A lot of people, they make mistakes, they have problem, they give up. We never give up. We learn from mistakes. And I think when we feel the message, the experience that I want to give you, the advice I want to give you, you will judge when this person will be successful or not by when he feel he thinks it's his fault or the other fault. If he thinks, my fail because of the others, this guy has no chance. Those people who fail always think, hmm, it is my fault. I did not do it properly. I should change here or change it there. These guys have opportunities. So I learn a lot from those people who fail. I learn a lot from those people who made mistakes. I learn a lot from my mistakes. So this is what I, when I, this is my life attitude. When I fail, I say, see, I will fail. When I succeed, I say, well, I never know, I could be successful. This make me very positive and optimistic. And because of so many mistakes, too much failure. That make me never complain. Because I get used to that. We are making mistakes every day, even to today. We 
made stupid decisions almost every day. Nobody knows. We thought it's smart, but finally proved stupid. But we learn, we do again. We learn, we do again. That's the way. That's the life attitude. Thank you. Thank you. You have said that Alibaba was born in China, but it was created for the whole world. So, can you tell us what Alibaba does now outside of China and in particular in Russia? Вы говорили то, что Alibaba был зарожден в Китае, но создавался для всего мира. Можете нам рассказать? Чем занимается Alibaba вне Китая и в особенности, в частности, в России? Yeah, Alibaba starts from no money, no technology, no people. In my apartment, 18 people decide that we want to use internet technology to help small business. That was the idea. After 18 years. We grow from 18 people to today close to 60,000 people. It is really not easy, but we survived. Today, we are one of the biggest internet companies in the world. I think we are lucky. We made so many mistakes but we still survive. How can you be continue to be lucky? That is the question. Keep on asking me. I think if you want to continue to be lucky, you have to give your luck to the others. You give luck to the others, you help others, the others in the future will help you. That was my, our thinking in the past 10 years. Alibaba was born in China, but Alibaba should not be a Chinese company. The, name, the day when I choose the name Alibaba, Alibaba is not a Chinese name. It's an Arabic name. And Iran said it's an Iranic name, Turkey says it's a Turkey name. I don't, I don't know where the name, but it's the name from Alibaba 1001 Mistakes, or Alibaba 1001 Nights, the story. We want to make this company a company that born in China, enable the world, helping the global young company, young people. As I said, that every century there is a company for the century. Microsoft was the company of last century, of the great century. IBM was a company of the century. What is the company of this century, 21st century? And I think we should not think about uh, Alibaba. We should always, we make money, serve Chinese. We should make the money, serve the world, serve this century. This, only think in that way, we can do more. Our company today is big, but compared to yesterday, it was big. But compared to tomorrow, it is still a tiny company. The world changes so fast. So this is our thinking. We want to make Alibaba be the company of the century. We want to make Alibaba the company supporting global small medium sized companies. We want to make this company supporting global young people. And we want to make this company to making sure women can have more jobs online. Because people don't care you're women or men online. This is what we want to do. And we're doing a lot outside China, Southeast Asia. We are also doing a lot in Indian. We just started to do more in America and, the, and also Canada. In Russia, we have a small business that's called AliExpress. Maybe AliExpress here is very big, but in, Ch in our company, probably less than 1% of our business is AliExpress. But 
AliExpress is not our main purpose of doing business in Russia. We do not want to be a Russian e-commerce company. We are not e-commerce company. We help other company become e-commerce. We hope what we want to do in Russia. We want to help in Russia to build up the logistic system. Russia is so big. Deliver things so difficult. Oh, I cannot imagine. I met some Russian girls <laughs> two years ago. I say, do you use AliExpress? Yes. I say, how long? How, what about the speed of delivery? They say it's great. I said, what do you mean by great? She said, only 45 days. <laughs> I mean, great is 45 minutes, not 45 days. Now we reduce from 45 days to 15 days. But that is not enough. Russia should have a modern logistic system that be able to deliver within 48 hours or 72 hours anywhere, any place in Russia, where you place order online, you should get it within 72 hours. And this should be using technology. This is your opportunity. Young people, logistics terrible, and you have the chance. If logistics is good, we have no chance. We should build up the, uh, the payment, online payment, online payment. Today in China, the mobile phone payment, so popular. I went to see, a few weeks ago, I saw some beggars on the street. You, when you beg money, they use zip code mobile phone, because people don't have pocket money. So we, in Russia, we should build up a good payment system. A modern payment system that every young people can receive money, pay money at the lowest cost. Every young people should be able to reach financial assistance. And we should build up Russia's AliExpress. We should build up Russia Alibaba.com. This is what we want to do. I'm okay whether AliExpress someday in Russia, no business. But we should have Russian young people to develop its own logistic, own e-commerce platform, own pl the payment platform. We would love to join this force. This is what we've been doing in the past two years. But come to the Moscow University. I have a, I have a personal and dream in the past two years because I'm not good at math. But computing science, big cloud computing, the basic is about the math, physics, is about computing technology. Moscow University, I think you guys have the best physics scientists and mathematics. So I would hope that Alibaba, we just announced two weeks ago, that we invested 15 billion US dollars on building up a lab to solve the problem for future, solve the problem for the world on economy and social science. So we hope that in Russia, in Moscow, we can build a lab that work with the young, excellent mathematicians from Russia, young physicist scientists from Russia. We work together. China, Russian, young people, young scientists working together. Solve problem for future. And I want to announce here, our CTO of Chief Technology Officer is coming to Moscow University very soon. And we want to hire as many young people as possible. Join, you don't have to work in China if you don't like. But if you love to work in China, we are very happy. You can work our office here and join together for cloud computing, big data for the future, and artificial intelligence and machine intelligence. This is something we want to do in Russia. And this is something we want to do together with Moscow University, that with your talents here, 
we have technology, we have data, we have consumers, we have a little bit of money, <laughs> and you have talents. We work together, we can do something really big. In this way, we can make Alibaba the company of the century. Jack, uh, I would like to hear your thoughts on technology. Today, many people are wary of it, and especially about the impact of artificial intelligence on jobs and society. What are your thoughts on this? Um, Джек, я бы очень хотела услышать ваше мнение насчет технологий. Многие сейчас их боятся, в особенности влияние искусственного интеллекта на рабочие места и общество в целом. Что вы думаете на этот счет? Don't worry about the future. All right, don't worry about technology. Uh, let me tell you one thing. When you worry about the future, that is because you are lack of confidence. You lack of imagination. We don't have, I may not have the solution for future, but there is a solution for future. We don't have the solution for future, but our young people have a solution for future. I find in this world, young people don't worry about the future. Older people worry for the future. I found those six, today successful people, they worry about the future. Let me tell you, future is the opportunity for everybody, especially the opportunity for young people, because we have nothing to lose. Right? This is what I tell myself 18 years ago. 18 years ago, we did not have money, so we, can, we have no money to lose. We don't have technology, we have no technology to lose. And then we say, we believe 10, 20 years later, e-commerce, internet will be powerful. If we start to do now, when a lot of success people, successful people don't like technology, don't like internet, we start to do it. 10, 20 years later, we will be the expert. 10, 20 years later, we'll be successful. So I think, don't worry about the future. Prepare for the future. Make your own future. Cloud computing, big data, artificial intelligence, they are new to anybody. You are successful, new to you. You are not successful, new to you. So what do you worry about? Second thing is don't worry about the things the other people worry about, especially don't worry about the things president and prime minister worry about. <laughs> worry about things you worry about. We, everybody have too many things to worry about. If you do not worry about yourself, you worry too much about the world. Now, today Alibaba should worry about the world. You should not worry about the world. <laughs> President Putin is worried about the world. You should not worry about the world. You should worry about when you graduate. How can you make a living? How can you do something that is different? How can you do something that is fun, interesting, and helping others? By the way, don't believe that technology is going to take away human beings' jobs. Technology is going to replace a lot of stupid jobs. When the first technology revolution come, the steam machine come, people worry, oh my God, steam machine is going to take away a lot of jobs. After 50 years, the steam machine created more jobs. When electricity comes, a lot of companies worry about losing jobs. But electricity created so many jobs. Artificial intelligence, they will create more jobs. The problem is next 20, 30 years may lose, create, lose a lot of jobs, but this is short period. So we people have to learn how we can survive 
in the artificial intelligence period. By the way, why human being can win machines? Machines, they might be stronger than human being. They might be smarter than human being. They might be run faster than human being. But they can never be as wise as human beings. Because human being, we have belief. We have religion. We have a heart. Which machine does not have. So, if you want to be ready for future, please do not follow yesterday's way of learning and teaching. Do not try to memory things hard and more. Because computer can remember things hard and more than you. Do not try to calculate faster because computer can calculate much faster than you do. So try to be creative. Try to be innovative. Try to be constructive. These are the things. Everything you learn, you think about, is this thing can make me more creative? If this thing can be more, make me more innovative, if this thing can be make me more constructive, let's do it. And also, I think when other people worry, opportunity comes. Make them worry. You should know nobody will and nobody can stop this technology revolution. You worry, it comes. You don't worry, it comes. So what's the point of a worry? So I said, people say, Jack, have you ever cried in the past 18 years doing e-business, internet in China? I don't cry. Because I know cry does not make any sense, does not help me. If cry can help me, I will cry every day. We should not cry, we should make competitors cry. So, think about, be positive, get ready for that. If you people from Moscow University cannot solve the problem, if you worry, the whole world, 99.9% of people have no future. So, don't worry about it. Be positive, start to do it, and when people worry, open the door, see what are they worry about, and solve the problem. That's what I think. And we'll work together. Jack, uh, you're a great believer in young people as we see and you spend so much time with students and with young entrepreneurs what advice is maybe some more you can give to all of us Jack, вы очень верите в молодых людей вы проводите много времени со студентами с молодыми предпринимателями какие бы еще советы вы могли бы нам дать yeah i love to be with young people first i'm still young and uh, <clears throat> second is that when you are among young people, you know you are young all the time. And young people are the solutions for tomorrow. Young people are the solutions for all the worries. And young people, if you stay with them, you will be full of energetic. But the advice I give to the young people is that also the advice I give to myself that nothing is easy nothing is free if you want to be successful you have to pay the price Alibaba 18 years to today's size yeah we are lucky but we work much harder than most of the people we never sleep well and sound in the evening. I traveled last year 867 hours a year in the flip plane, in the plane. I'm working hard, my team working very hard. 
18 years, we work like a normal company, 70 years, day and night. Nothing is free. Nothing is easy. Easy means you have to think different. You have to do different. If you, everybody, if John said this is right, you fall John. Why you? So you have to think, for example, early days in my company, when some ideas come to my desk, Jack, this is a great idea, and I look at everybody. Everybody say it is a good idea, I normally throw into the rubbish. Because everybody say this is good, then all the other people think of. If everybody say this is going to be very tough, I'm very interested in that tough question. And I pick up and say, how can we do it in a different way? This is to be unique, to be different. And the third, this is my advice, and this is also I telling myself every day. Today is very tough. Tomorrow is more tougher. The day of tomorrow is beautiful, but most people die tomorrow evening. You have to work very hard. Every tough day, every tough situation, problems you meet, that is the training of yourself. When you graduate your school, graduate from this school, you just start your career of learning. When you got a PhD diploma, a bachelor diploma, this is just a certificate your parents pay the tuition for four years. Your real challenge is when you leave the college, the real life starts, the real exam stats, the real test stats. That's life. So, one thing you are lucky, as I said, if students from Moscow University cannot survive, 99.9% .9 of the people in the world cannot survive. Only you have this confidence, you will be able to face the challenge of future. Thank you, Jack, for all these stories, for all these answers. And now I will turn to the audience, and you will have an ability to, and time to ask your own questions. And I'll appreciate if you formulate them on English, but if you have some problems, we have someone who can repeat, and we will help you. So, who wants to be first? Okay. Can you, can you tell who are you, your name, and be a little... Law school. Yes. Oh. <laughs> My question is actually a little bit rhetorical. So, in the times when market is more comp in the times when market is more competitive than ever, is it hard to keep being confident on yourself and your future? Okay. So you're from the law department. The question is that uh, in the time the market is going to be more competitive. How can you keep the confidence for the future, right? Market is never easy. In the early day, just like doing business is never easy. People say, ah, oh, doing business is more difficult. No, never easy. Continue to be more difficult. The confidence is not... <clears throat> the best way to do it is that find a good team. Find the people that share the same vision, same dreams, work with them. The only thing you listen is, you listen to a group of people. If you're doing a company, listen to your customers, if they are happy. If they, your customers are happy, don't worry too much. You still have competitive. If your companies, if your customers happy, listen to your colleagues, your team. Are they confident? If they are confident, don't worry about it. 
Don't listen to a divisor's lawyers. I'm sorry. Don't listen to those people. Ah, you have no chance. Whether the market has a chance or not, custom tell you. Your colleagues tell you. So nobody is the expert of future. Most of the experts are yesterday. So for the future, the best way you learn it is that you know the early days, Alibaba had no money, no revenue. Nobody pay us. The revenue we got are the, all the email of thanks from customers. The customer sent us email. Oh, Alibaba, you're so great. You're helping me a lot, but I don't have money to pay you. Fine. We know one day they will pay if we really help them. So the confidence is from the customers. Confidence is from your team. And your competitors always try to destroy your confidence. If your competitors spend a lot of time destroy your competence or confidence, that means you are good. Thank you. Here's a guy. Oh, oh. sorry. Well, my question is going to be. Can you please tell us about your experience? Please, we very much ask you. My name is Timur. Is this enough? No. Faculty of Economics. Uh, Jack, uh, my question is going to be a bit sophisticated. Well, it is going to be regarding Russian delivery system uh, that you inspired us to build up, to build up a good one, better than it is now. Uh, however, obviously, we do not have this financial opportunity that your company has. Still, we do not have Alibaba delivery now. Well, it is the first question. Second question. Uh, it is obvious that as like as other spheres of production of goods and services in Russian economy uh, is monopolized by government corporations. What do you think of perspectives and efficiency in terms, in terms of economic development of these current situations in the current market? Thank you. Thank you. Good questions. The first question is, we will build up a logistic system, but we don't have as much money as Alibaba. So how can you be successful, right? Tell me, anybody here has money for building up a logistic system? <laughs> I don't have money for building up a... I don't think Alibaba has the money to build up Russia logistic system. Cost billions, billions, billions of money. Nobody has the money. Bank has the money, they will not give you. <laughs> this is the opportunity. You don't, it, first, it's impossible to build up a sophisticated, advanced logistics system within one year. Takes about 10, 15, 12 years. And you have to do little by little. This is the challenge I got. Nine, year 2001, 2002. People came to me and said, when we go for raising money, people ask, how can you be successful? No internet in China enough? No logistic, no credit card, no money, no talents. How can you be successful? This question I've been challenged year after year. Because everybody has no money. That's the opportunity for entrepreneurs. Think creative. Every business starts from tiny business. We, when we start Alibaba, we try, I go to a lot of, I go to China Post, I go to SOEs, say, can you help us to deliver? They said, no, 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 you're too tiny, too small. We don't deliver. So we went to the entrepreneurs who wanted to deliver from their own village, own city, own province. So we're helping them. Today, 
We helped 65 million packages per day in China. We delivered them. How many people working on that? Three million people working on that. We never do ourselves. We do not hire three million. We help them to get the jobs. So let me tell you, 15 years ago, China logistics system was so bad. China Post, same speed like a Russia today. <laughs> Nobody believed the work. How can you work, right? China is also a big country. The only thing is we have a bad, more population, more people. But we think it's opportunity. The developed countries, the logistic cost of the economy is today 12% of the GDP, of the all the cost. Country like China, underdeveloped countries, developing countries, they're like six, 16%. Today, because of the internet, we are able to lower down to 7 and 6%. This depends on you. It's your opportunity. If you want to do it, it's young, if, if young people want to do it, you will be, it's a, there's a chance. Don't talk to successful people. This world, to convincing successful people is the most difficult thing. We are not successful. You say, I want to deliver this thing for my city. I don't think about the whole Russia. Just my city, you will win. If you, you say, I want to build up a whole logistic for whole Russia, you don't have a chance. Nobody will give you money. Because everybody working for same cities, when you connect, it's going to be big. This is my advice. Russia has chance. You can learn a lot from Alibaba experience. Shorten. Right? So we are, our, our packages deliver every day. Of our company alone, bigger than whole US package, whole country. We made it happen in 10 years. You also can make it happen. Right? It's not about money. When you do right, when you do proper, if you do the right direction, money will come. If you, a lot of people say, if I have money, I'm going to do this. I say, you will never have money. If you do these things, you dedicate, you really want to do it, and you make progress, money will come. This is the first question. Second is about monopoly. Yeah. Russia, I saw <clears throat> Moscow. Very beautiful this time. Much cleaner. More traffic. Very tight. But I've never been to a lot of other cities. I think Russia economy should be focused on more private business. Small business. Not purely rely on the oil, gasoline, energy, big SOE, state owned business, big private company. We should have more entrepreneurs, dynamic, tiny, small business. And this is what we think. This is the future of business model of 21st century. I think if we have more small business, every small business can exporting. Well, by the way, let me tell you. People say, ah, oh, Russia e-commerce is very developed. Russia e-commerce today is a tiny infant, baby, less than a baby. Your e-commerce put together less than 1% of the total Russian retail. It's more like 12 years ago, China. It's a huge opportunity. But don't wait for the monopoly will do it. Don't wait for the SOE. Don't wait for the logistic ready. Don't wait for the bank ready. You should do before they are ready. If everything's ready, why they need you? 
If everybody, everything's ready, you have no chance. Because everything's not ready, you have the chance. But get ready for the tough days. Yeah, thank you. Girl with curly hair. <laughs> of course, of course, you will be next. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, first let me tell you that uh, language is very important. But you speak good, good English does not mean you will do global business. Right? <coughs> Mao Zedong, he, used, uh, he made a speech here, right? Mao Zedong does not uh, speak uh, English. Nixon did not speak Chinese, but these older two guys made a global deal, China, U.S. are working together. It's the vision, it's the belief that you have that changed the world. But let me tell you other thing. Language is so important. It helped me a lot. Because of artificial intelligence, in the future, you don't, people say, I don't need to learn, learn English or Russian or Japanese. Uh, something a chip here can translate it quickly. No, it's not about language. It's about the culture. When you learn the other language, you start to understand the other culture. You start to appreciate respect the other culture. When you appreciate, respect the other culture, you will be respected and appreciated by the others. Then you can work out together. I learned my English by myself when I was a child. I never got one day English training class outside China. But I think I understand the Western culture much more better than those Chinese students study outside. Because I'm not learning language, I'm learning culture. When you respect the other culture, when you appreciate the other culture, it's easy to make friends. If you don't like the other culture, you will never make friends. If you don't have friends, how can you do business? So I would say language helped me a lot. But most thing helped me is my respect for the different culture. I wish I could speak Russian. The more I come here, the more I learn a lot. I asked one of the Russian guy, why, you know, Russian too tough <laughs> and Chinese too gentle? How can they mix together? And he asked you a very good, and he said, Jack, this country is so cold, we have to be tough. <laughs> My city, Hangzhou, is so good weather, so we don't have to be tough. Yeah, so if you if you have to do everything with a translator, no good. Of course, sometimes you have to, right? But if you can understand a language that can communicate, it's easy for you to communicate, easy to understand and be understood. Thank you, I hope I answered your question. So let's ask this girl, which I wanted to ask, and then someone next. 
Yeah. Pre please present yourself. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Marina Ross, I'm a tech entrepreneur uh, and I'm founder of Hydrop, which is a unique nano-cosmetics uh, brand for apparel and uh, footwear that was developed here in Moscow State University. Uh, so my question, um, like, Mr. Ma, before you created an Alibaba, all the small um, uh, businesses in China, all the small manufacturers, they didn't have access to the global market. And right now, we have a similar pro problem in Russia, but with an intellectual products. Not with manufactured goods, not with commodities, but with innovations, with uh, inventions. Like, look at this audience. It, like, it, it is full of scientists and inventors. And we have many more, we have millions of like, talented people in Russia who are developing a high quality, creative and innovative technologies. But our local market is too small. It cannot digest it. And it's, it's a, a huge waste. It, it, and it's such a shame uh, that all of these um, technologies are not serving to the humanity. So my question is, what would you advise us to do in order to give to Russian intellectual products uh, access to the global markets? All right. Thank Good you. question. A lot of people have great technology inventions, but they cannot do business. Uh, Russia is too small market. And the outside market, there is no access. So what's, how we can do it? Partner with the others. Partner with a company like Alibaba. Can help. <laughs> so a lot of people, if you are good at invention, but you may not be good at marketing. If you are good at marketing, normally you are not good at invention. So people need to work it together. If you have a great invention, and you are extremely fun and good at invention and creative technology, must find good business people to partner. And finding good, so like me, I know little about technology. Today, I'm so happy we don't use PC. The only thing I can use my PC and send, receive email and browse. I don't know how to use. Today I'm happy we all use a mobile phone. I'm not a technology guy. But I know if we, if I want to, if we want to realize our dream, we must have the technology. But if I don't know the technology, we should invite the best engineers and scientists. I work with them. I listen to them. Nobody can do anything. What you should do is always form a team. I think it is very difficult to make an exact company like Alibaba. Again, you can make a company better than Alibaba, but it will be difficult to make exact business model. Our model, I will not say be great, but it's very workable. Our model, because of 18 years, especially for the first 10 years, nobody believe it. Everybody say, Jack Ma is stupid, crazy, doing something that will never make money. So the smart people, rich people, never be our competitors. That gives us chance. So, finding good partner, find good team, and always focus on the things that you are good at. Focus on the things that you love. And that is what we call a partnership. I answer that, I give you a device for those young people. If you are 20 to 30 years old, please find a good boss. Not, not necessarily a good company. Learn from the boss. Learn how to do it. 
when you are 30 to 40 years old, try to do something yourself if you really want to try. When you are 40 to 50 years old, do things that you are good at. After 20 years of learning, you should do something you're good at. When you are 50 to 60 years old, spend your time supporting young people. When you are six, over 60 years old, spend time with your grandchildren. <laughs> right? That is normally a lot of people like that. So when you are graduate, when you just in the university, don't think about, I want to resign from the school and be another Bill Gates, because Bill Gates left Harvard. There's only one Bill Gates in the world. When you graduate, find a company. Most important, find a good boss that can train you, discipline you, and tell you what is good and right. It's more important than a good company. Right? Of course, a good company, a good boss, even better. And then, continue your life. It's all about the partner. Sure. Thank you. This guy and Ольга. yes, you or your friend, okay. Оля, у нас последний вопрос, правильно? Yes, and it will be the last question. Sorry, unfortunately, our time runs out. I'll just repeat the question so everyone Sorry, can hear. Sorry, I catch it. Yeah. So um, she said three weeks ago, Alibaba launched Tmall in Russia, and is wondering what opportunities there are for people in the room to contribute to to Alibaba's Tmall team. How will you and your team develop Tmall here in Russia? Thank you very much for this question. I think Timor Russia is something that we are testing. Personally, my wish is that Timor Russia can inspire as many young people, as many entrepreneurs as possible. They can do the same thing. We not necessarily want to make Timor Russia big. I hope you understand my saying. Because we don't want Alibaba one day become the largest e-commerce company in Russia. This is, no, this is not my dream. This is not our dream. We want, by working on Timor Russia, a lot of know-how, a lot of experience, a lot of things we'll learn from Russian market can share with people. So more young people in Russia start to do things on e-commerce. That is something that I really want to do. So we think that Alibaba, AliExpress is something we want to do a better job. AliExpress today is helping Chinese products or your, uh, Asia products to Russia. The purpose is what we want is helping Russian products to the world. This is what we want to do. So we are very, very happy that we, I just, before I came here, I was, I was having a lunch with our team in Moscow. We have about 100 colleagues here. 
And I sat, in 10, 15 years, we must have 5,000 people in Russia. That means we need at least 4,900 people. This 5,000 people is not to do e-commerce because 5,000 people do e-commerce in Russia does not work. 5,000 people can support Russia SME to do e-commerce. 5,000 people can help logistic do better. 5,000 people can help payment better. 5,000 people can helping the SME promoting their products better. So this is our thinking. So many people keep on asking me, Jack, you know, you are coming here to conquer and occupy a whole Russia. You are going to take away a lot of our business. No, 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 this is not our purpose. We are not Amazon. We are Alibaba. I mean, I mean, it does not mean we are better than Amazon. We just have a different business model. So we want to have more talents from Russia joining Alibaba. And we also have a lot of problems of translation for AliExpress, right? People say, have funny translations, which I'm sorry, I don't understand. But people say, it's great. We have a unique language capability. But I hope that, I hope more and more young people in Russia getting jobs because of e-commerce infrastructure. Finding jobs on the logistic, but not logistic does not mean delivered. Logistic is smart logistic based on data technology and payment. So this is something about how to join in Alibaba. I'm very happy to hear that. And uh, we have an uh, office here. And uh, maybe I should uh, write uh, my email. You uh, can. Somebody. Yeah. Okay. Of course. I, I write my, uh, my, my email, but my contact email. Thank you. Because I don't read the email. <laughs> you know why? I think the world is getting so complicated by reading emails. You write a long email, waste time, she write her email, and then everybody email. Be efficient. Today, mobile phone is much more efficient. So, but I leave uh, email address of the, uh, of the contact. So if you are interested in working with Alibaba, joining Alibaba, and thinking about uh, physics or, or, or in computer or, 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 or math, we'll be very happy. And we will get email and contact you. <laughs> Q-U-Y-A-N-E-O at Taobao, right? Yeah.